So I'm going to be taking a look at this, these, not this. Uh, I was just downloading that for the references. Um, this, 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 and this. And I'm going to start with these two. Um, so uh, Yahya is the one who did this. Um, so he had this as a sketch, and then he rendered it, which I thought is amazing. Um, I'm not sure which came first. I really don't know. But it's an amazing rendering job that you did. I do want to talk about how this kind of looks like someone crouching. So pay attention, please, mods. Um, so uh, uh, and I don't mean the mods pay attention. I mean the mods get on those who are paying attention. It looks like someone just like crouching kind of, you know, like when someone's just sitting in such a way where they're crouching um, and their hands are like that. So that's kind of what it looks like. I don't like that because... There are other things a tail can do. A tail can do so much more than what you've designated here. Uh, so we have... I'm just going to try to steam all this in. All right, a tail is very flexible. Also, this is a fox, yeah? Fox in the fall. Okay, so if this is a fox, why have you chosen an angle that makes him look like a potato? <clears throat> it's a fox. So what's the most memorable thing that you'd say about the fox. It's its movement. It's uh, flexibility. It's almost cat and dog-like um, uh, silhouette. That would be the most beautiful thing about it. So I would say a fox is more to do with the, lo lo the longevity of its... Um, is, that, is that the right term to use? The longness of its torso. The flexibility of its legs. Um the, the, the like the cat like stances and the elegance and the way it moves so I would say that is what I recollect the most out of a out of a fox and then of course its tail its tail is very significant um, so once I give it all of that and I'll darken it for you just as a silhouette see how much more intriguing that is of course the leg I chose was a bit skinny um, I think I lost my lasso just around here but do you get what I'm saying? You didn't choose the most optimal uh, uh, silhouette. <clears throat> um, okay, that's enough, guys. Please uh, focus on class. Um, mods, feel free to silence anyone who's consistently um, trying to meme, meme up everything. Uh, so, starting now. Starting now. <laughs> uh, so, um, just a quick timeout. Not a ban, of course not. I'm just doing this. I'm darkening the back over here. And yeah, yeah, feel free to discuss this with me. I know you're in here. Uh, feel free to have a, a chat. You can write in Arabic. I'll try to read it. Um, but the biggest thing was that we were pretty much missing all of this uh, part of the of the of the. F I just gave it like a cute little weird walking leg. Maybe this one should be a little bit more like that instead. Um, just as long as we have an intriguing thing in the silhouette. Just as long as it's bringing in information. Because other than that, it's just a potato in a field. A field is boring, a potato is boring. How do we make the focal point take more attention? In fact, the field was looking more interesting than the potato. Right, this might need a little bit more bloating. I'm just looking at my navigator to make sure it all looks right. <clears throat> Okay, and then uh, just connecting this here. Um, the, the, the focus is now turned over to the side. We might have to recenter him. Another big problem is that you have a background that isn't really, uh, it's not coming from the right. So let me see if I can, uh, it's not coming from the right. Uh, depth rules. So we have to make the fox darker than the background. Right now he seems to be sharing the same kind of uh, volume and depth and uh, values. Seems to be just flat part of the background. Is Yahya in here right now? You didn't ask me for, for a critique and then you left, Yahya. 
You do. I'll get you. Alright, so I'm just getting rid of that far leg. I'm going to just ease up on the little mane here. Select inverse and then um, uh, merge that down. And then I'm going to lighten the background. So actually, I'm going to start by darkening him first. Hmm. عندما ذكرت ذلك هو كذلك. ما أفتهم. Alright, so I'm darkening him and I am lightening the background. Have you guys ever seen the Jimmy Kimmel Yaya -ya guy? A spoon. <laughs> Have you guys seen him? <laughs> the Yaya -ya guy from Jimmy Kimmel is just he's the best. Okay, so we have his name is Yahya, but they can't say that in English. They don't have a hat sound, so they say Yaya. -ya. Okay, so before, after. The background is nice and out of the way. This tree can be a little bit darker since it's closer, so I'll erase away to get the tree back. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm just getting back some of the contrast in the foreground because stuff in the foreground gets to be a little bit more um, dark. And then what we need to do is select little foxy. Okay, so we're gonna just uh, select this dude and we're gonna reflect him back onto the water. And this should be a good kind of like uh, movement forward for you, this critique. I can't jump into making it optimal because I have a lot um, to look at today. Best, I hope that you know you kind of are getting what you need to, oops, not that side, uh, vertical, to kind of figure out. So the foot isn't exact, it's a little bit less than, and it's a bit distorted and invisible, and a little bit flattened because of the direction of the water. And then we've got some more distortion. So texture of the water isn't going to reflect a perfect image, but anything that lets him read is a little bit more <coughs> uh, visible, but of course the water isn't muddy, but the water isn't perfectly clear either. I do apologize if today I sound a little bit groggy or out of it, um, or I'm stuttering, or I sound... Uh, the brain foggy, that's because of my back problem. Alright, so I'm just doing that. Another thing about objects in the foreground is their contrast. So it's not just that they're darker, they get to have a little bit more brightness to them. So we are going to... <laughs> يمكن كلامي متأخر عليك ال الفيديو يعني الإنترنت مالك يمكن جاي أخر كلامي لأن أنا قلت بطاطا a while ago I think uh, people in, in the um, Middle East are getting a pretty bad connection so I'm just going to get rid of this line try to think about the cube المثلث just like that, and um, this part isn't as exposed as the top. Uh, then we bring in the edges all the way so that we replace the the line. The khat. Forgot how to say edge in Arabic. Anyone want to Google that for me? Um, had, I don't know, I think it's had, like a limit, but I 
almost forgot. I'm just going to show off where the light is touching the little dude. Maybe a cast shadow coming off his snout. But this is a good place to start. I can't render the rest of the fox, but I hope you have an idea of where to start. I'm going to throw this off and some light like that. <clears throat> And uh, just gonna carry this shadow all the way down. Shufil al khayal. Don't forget this. This is important. It's beautiful. And then uh, that same khayal probably should be a drop shadow some somewhere down here. And then of course we have the fact that the water is reflective. It's like a really big mirror. So it should be doing a little bit more like this. You don't need a lot to show off the reflection of the box, but I suggest a little bit more, um, you know, like a, an attempt to kind of reveal the, the form around here and just show off a silhouette more than details. So. <clears throat> half, a, half a head. Oh, I was right about head. Yeah, I was right about head. That's as much as I know, but half of I've never heard that. Um, because there's so many dialects in Arabic, that's hard to keep up. But had was okay. So, ursim ma'al had, mu ma'al khat. Draw with the edge, not with the line. Right, a little bit more reflection. And then, because he seems to be looking up, he seems to be like a, I don't know, he seems to be just like a beautiful, serene moment. So I'm going to try to bring in the floodlight from the top, which you've already had. Good job. But I think you need a little bit more. This is way. You don't need a lot because the more you do, the more cheesy it'll look. I'm not sure how to explain cheesy in Arabic, but... Um... That's his ayar. Don't be ayar with the light. Um, and then we have a little bit of framing over here. I don't even know if tatayat is a bad word. I don't know. There's so many bad words in Arabic. I can't keep up. But don't exaggerate. Don't go crazy. Don't uh, be emotional with your lines, basically, is what it means. To be too emotional with something. Of course, I have to have a word for that. <clears throat> okay, so before, after... For after the water seemed muddy um, and the uh, broom was kept felt like it was closed off the fox didn't really feel like he's part of oh okay Safif no no Safif Safif I sorry if I'm saying a bad word right now <laughs> um, yeah the, the cuteness in the fox's face it kind of looks like a Shiba Inu yeah um, so you see all this Yahya um, you can try some of this, you can move away from it, but it looked like a batata because what happened here is that this wasn't even in the shape of a fox's tail. A fox's tail does something like that, it reaches a point. Shlona um, point I don't know, I forgot. <laughs> uh, but uh, this right here, it doesn't even read as a, a fox, so it read as a knee. Like he was sitting, like he was crouching, like he was half fox, half human. Uh, but here we get the uh, we get this back. We get all of this back here. We get the shape of the uh, fox is intriguing. The beautiful expression, the cast shadow, and then I would recommend having some more trees in the background. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that they are um, desaturated. They're not as bright. Um, as the other tree, not as dark as the other tree. I think this is perfect. I think I placed that tree exactly where God intended. And uh, I think this one needs to be a little darker, at least at the top. <clears throat> okay, perfect. I'm going to blur that because lasso is too strong. You can add details to this. But before... It was not a knee, no. It's not a half thing, half. It was just the tail. Because look at the little white bit at the end. <coughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, I hope that's helpful. Um, let me know if you want this back, Yahya, because I know you might want to keep this copy. I usually don't give copies, but I'm, I'm going to offer it to Yahya. Um, okay, let's move on to this one. All right, so right off the bat, I have no idea what's happening with the bacon, so I'm going to completely take that and just remove this. Astaghfirullah from my, <laughs> I'm joking, from my uh, critique, because I don't know what the bacon is doing there. I don't know what's going on. I don't know the story. I don't want to mess with it. I'm just going to factor the bacon out of my assessment today. All right, we're going to talk about expression and uh, the hair. So that's what this person asked for. They didn't know what to do with the expression of the green girl's hair. They didn't, um, the ex green girl's face, the expression um, in her face, her hair didn't look natural, and this girl's hair didn't look natural. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work large to small. I'm going to go to the largest object you're having trouble with. So I'm going to choose a mid-tone and just completely get rid of the... <laughs> Bacon is haram. <laughs> I'm an art. I'm a Muslim artist. I don't. I don't critique bacon. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's not true. <clears throat> um. So we're gonna just get rid of all this weirdness that you had because once I use the darken mode on a mid tone, you really didn't have much shadows. Look, this is all you have. Shadows are your. What are gonna reveal? Shadows are the language with which you reveal objects. Things can't be drowning in light and or mid-tones. So this is where you're missing some stuff. What happened though is that you have this really bright background behind her. Um, my brush is shrinking the closer I get to her face. Why is my brush shrinking the closer I get? Can anyone answer? Okay, what did you message on Facebook? Hatta what did I can copy? Does anyone know why I'm shrinking my brush the closer I get to her face? It's a really easy question, relatively. My brush increases in size. Instinctively, I do this. Instinctually, whatever the word is. Don't know my words today. And then I'm going to smudge a bit, because the brush, even though I, sh I enlarged it, still not um, enough. For what reason? It can't be that sharp away from the face, because the face is... <clears throat> to bring detail near the focal point. Excellent, Ariel. Okay, so what you were saying was that you were having trouble with the hair. The hair, in this case, is in a state of silhouette, and that means we just need to more detail near the focal area of the face. Exactly, exactly. So we need to outline this in some light. So where the light is coming from, it's mostly around here. Her face feels very uh, bright compared to the background. The background's got all this strength in it, so I'm just going to dim her face a little bit more. I'm going to dim Bacon Girl's face as well. Oh, I'm going to do that in a new layer. I'm just going to dim their faces a little bit because my silhouette won't make sense if I don't. <clears throat> if, if, if like you're, um, I know this is a commission for someone, I'm not sure if it's even like morally right for me to critique a commission, but let's just say that it's okay. <laughs> um, why is there bacon? <laughs> What's the bacon for? <laughs> What's the bacon for? I'm curious, why is it so important? It needs to be in this like almost uh, cute, kind of like side-by-side, -side like a profile, I mean, uh, sorry, portrait of, uh, you know, of two friends, it seems. Is it the bacon? All right, so I'm just going to throw in some subsurface just around the hair over here. And just a little bit more over there. You seem to be working with high saturation, so I have to meet it with the right amount. Um, you can bring it down if you want. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not sure what this expression is. You said you're having trouble with it. I, I really don't know. Each one seems to be having their own kind of daydream. She's dreaming about her future husband, and she's dreaming about more bacon. I, I really don't get what's going on. She kind of looks like a fox with the... This is like a fox theme today. She kind of looks like she has 
a bit of a, I don't know, I'm just going to add the lower eyelid and then just try to make sense of what I am doing as I go. <clears throat> okay, so... Um, just showing off where the eyelid is and I'm moving over here. I'm going to grab some of this color actually and just use it on the face. Um, this is that universal color that's bouncing everywhere. And I'm just going to block in as I go. Um, again, I'm not really sure what's going on, but for the exp I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to do because I can't put a face. Is this the artist here today? I can't put an expression on a face if I don't know where it's coming from. But at least I could have helped with the hair. The hair not looking natural is because you're not working large to small. So large to small means that we're working with large pieces of hair and then dividing as we go. So this might help you create a more natural look to the hair you're drawing. So we're working large to small. We've set up a nice group of hair. And now I'm going to shrink my brush and break those up into even smaller pieces. So I'm left behind with more of a League of Legends type of hair texture. League of Legends artists easily just stop right here, but realistic artists keep moving forward. Um, so we're going to shrink our brush one more time. So by League of Legends, I mean just like commercial, easy, anime friendly, not too realistic, just at the same level of rendering as everything else. You detail this. You clean it up, detail it, throw a band of light, and you're done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But because you're kind of going for realistic and the face feels a little bit more in need of more of a realistic head of hair so it doesn't look like a wig, we shrink our brush one more time. Um, many more times, but this one more time is all I'm going to do now. And this is what now I'm doing. I'm just shrinking this even more. These bands of hair, I'm shrinking them one more time. Dividing them, really. Okay. So I'm just throwing in more detail that I need. Than I need. Sorry. Can't talk. And then I'm going to think about where the light source is coming from. So I'm going to darken. <coughs> and darken at the top. And then smudge. I'm going to smudge away these blocks a little bit. Leave behind only the negative space that they kind of came with. And then I'm actually going to show you one more level. This level is where the detail happens. So we're going to raise up some of these pieces with the smallest size brush we're going to work with. It's going to work for bright values and dark values. So that means we have some of these guys. Some of these guys here. And that's the secret to hair. We're working large to small. We're very, very carefully breaking up each chunk of hair we were introducing. I'm going to start getting a um, brush here to combine with the lower level. Make sense of where these bangs are going. You see how it's starting to layer? Some of these are in front of others. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let me try to make sense of this edge. And then I'm going to get Dodge Tool really quickly and just make a, a curved band of highlight travel across like one hot spot just like that. And then maybe more at the bottom just slightly, just like so. So now to see how it's growing out has volume. And this is because we were very, very delicate with the way we built up the hair. 
Also, hair is white on the band, it's saturated on either side of the band. So I'm going to put it on desaturate, and I'm going to desaturate the whitest part of the band and saturate the outsides of it so that it's reflecting this color. Then I'm going to get that exact color on normal, low opacity, like super low opacity, and just kind of sit it right on top of the hair just like that. So that'll start feeling a little bit more realistic. There are more steps to go through to get it realistic, but this might be where you want to stop. Also, you're missing one big cast shadow. Um, I'm not sure why a cast shadow would be exempt, but should never be. <coughs> so it's just going to do a little, a little thing like that. Hi on bacon. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Focus, please. <laughs> I'm so sorry, mods. I really make your job so hard. I mean, I can't not make jokes. <laughs> um, all right, everyone. Please, no more vegan talk. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Tom. He's, um, so sorry. I don't know if um, Taurus is here today. All right, so just casting a shadow here. Um... So I'll show you the before and after. There won't be bacon this time. So. Oh, fuck, there is bacon. Let's get rid of it. <coughs> okay, so before, after. So we darkened it to respect the background value. If you want to bring in a new color, um, a new value for everything, you can. Where is this light coming from? So it might be coming from the side. The side meaning she might have this exact color on her cheek here, on the side of her nose here, on her mouth here. So now we have a bounce light revealing stuff a little bit extra. Um, but that would probably be it. And I think you do actually need this light. And there's that cat shadow. Uh, so the reason why you need this and you need the shadow I just added is because this rim that you were telling me this is a really bright background over here and this girl she seems to be kind of hugged she seems to be kind of like i don't i really don't know <laughs> it's one of the most bizarre like combinations i've ever seen she seems to be like od'd on bacon i'm so sorry mods but she seems to have od'd on bacon and i don't know this girl's hoping that ambulance shows up soon and she's kind of just like lit i i really don't know <laughs> what's <laughs> what's happening here at all um so i'm throwing this shadow over because this this the shoulder is casting a shadow <clears throat> oh yeah you can reflect some green off the armor on the armor just like that just a little piece there you go that's really nice um you can reflect some of this color too good call uh what else um you could re you could clean this up <clears throat> All right. I don't know what kind of commission this is and how much you're getting paid. <laughs> I've worked in freelancing. I've gotten some weird, weird stuff before. Uh, so before, after. The face was too pale. The light source on her was different from this light source, which was different from that, which was different on her face. Um, which is not how I raised you. Uh, so when my babies go out into the world and get paid and get commissions, they better know how to, you know, stay true to one primary light source and then add their exceptions thereafter with the bounce lights and secondary light sources. Hope that helped you. Um, this one seems to be a girl embarrassed, kind of flirtatious, that has a flower grown out of her head, um, which is cute. Your expression is good, but you're drawn a man. You've drawn not just a man, a teenage man, a teenage boy. Um, and that's because of the largeness in the eyes, the smallness in the nose, the thinness of the eyebrows, and the thinness of the lips and their width. Also, the expression isn't really um, speaking uh, like a girl kind of embarrassed but flirtatious like that. So to be embarrassed is to bring in both eyebrows up to be flirtatious is to bring in the arc up. So she's kind of in between both, right? 
the face as well, extremely manly, thin neck, a uh, thick neck, not a triangular shape to the face, uh, a very, very wide jawline. It was just all men. It was all men. Pointy chin. We know how we hate those. <clears throat> and then we've got a little bit over there. Okay, so no thick jawline. Uh, no thick neckline, no pointy masculine chin, uh, no thinness in the lips, and closeness of the nose to the mouth. I'm going to use the bloat tool here. All right. Oopsie. Um, whoa, okay, so I'm just gonna give the lips some volume, just a natural kind of like feminine volume to them. You'll see in the before and after how exceptionally masculine it looked before, after, okay, and you've got value sharing around the nose, you've got outlines around the eyebrows. I'm not sure how long you've been in my community, but this is not acceptable. These are all not acceptable. Michi needs to walk you through the city with like a shame bell and ask Tom to wear that nun costume with the bell. Shame. So I'm just going to try to bring out some, some structure to the nose. Still reads as a bit masculine, but it's okay. Light, light's coming from, I don't know, it's coming from inside out. It's coming from, it's uh, wherever, you know? It's, we're all very special people, and the light doesn't need to come from anywhere. Right? Am I right? If I'm right, then, I don't know, do you agree with me? <laughs> Whoever agrees with me will be added to a list. All right, so we have now some more structure to the nose. Mm, lines. I'm gonna give the lips some more volume because that was white for some reason. I'm gonna bring that color here and just put it on the cupid's bow and the tip of the nose. Don't know why your eyebrows are outlined, but it's okay, I'll internalize it. We'll be fine. And then some more on the cheeks. So the pointy chin was really the biggest problem. It's always the problem. It starts you off into the jaw, and then it moves you up into the thickness of the jaw compared to the forehead. And then by the end of it, you have a square head for a feminine character, which makes zero sense. Um, it's, it's like a, you, you do get characters like that that are supposed to be delicate but huge, but those are funny. Those are deliberately set up like that. So I'm just trying to focus the geometry of the nose back so that I know I'm providing more edges than I need so that I could blend them away later. You have no light on the lower eyelid. Oh, I, I internalize all your problems. <laughs> I, I internalize all the mistakes I come across, like the big ones, like lines and stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm growing a tumor. <laughs> that's not a joke. That's not a joke. I'm just pretty much referencing the scene from Family Guy where Lois has a tumor in, his, in her head just dancing. I'm a tumor, 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 I'm a tumor. <laughs> she internalizes all his stupidity. Alright, all right. I don't know why the neck is brighter than everything, but uh, we'll catch the rest of the body up. Okay, a little bit more here, a little bit more on the forehead, and there we go. 
and a little bit more here. Got to recorrect the nose because we raised the value in. All right, so this is a good place for you to start. Um, the flirtation is there. I'm not so sure about the expression, but it uh, you might want to go back. Again, I'm not. It's all purple, but you use the use the cherry red to the eyes. Let me just show you. You can use a red that isn't so gross and brown. You can use a red that's more on the purple side. See, it's up here with the purples, and uh, that'll kind of balance all your colors together. It's still gonna be red. still red but it's a purple red that matches the color wash so you can match colors te te color temperatures properly <clears throat> the dancing Arabic kid before just seems like a guy with a wig like a teenage kid probably grade 8 probably gets in trouble a lot and then after same expression same same girl really same story with the distance between the nose and the mouth, the thin lip, the small eye, the largeness of the sides of the nose. Um, I know I know a lot of you think that what you draw is great. I know a lot of you have that problem that you, you it's not a problem, it's just a good amount of self-love, healthy amount. But never allow that self-love to be uh, suffocating to a point where... It, you are having obvious mistakes, and this, this, this may this may not have been obvious to this artist particularly. These may not have been obvious to them, but for some of you, these are pretty obvious. While you're doing them, you just keep doing it because you think it looks good, because you have that self love, which is good. I don't want you to take away from it, but I do want you to consider that you may be appreciating your art too much, <laughs> and I want you guys to always take a step away, ask people what you think. Um, and what you're going for, ask them, does this look like what I'm going for? And, uh, it should become pretty obvious when you have massive mistakes like that. All right. Um, I'm going to look at this one. I don't know if I'm going to look at the big one, uh, but same thing I did last time, but this time I'm going to kind of reverse it. I'm going to, instead of lightening the background, I'm going to dim the background. And I'm going to lighten the little dude. I think that's all you really needed because an owl wouldn't really wouldn't make sense. And we're kind of cheating here with the outline. An owl wouldn't make sense kind of just chilling there in broad daylight. Um, I know they do come out in daylight, but that's not the point here. You also have a massive like tree line behind him that hasn't really been explored. Uh, so, so you've got like these extra details here you could have added to your painting of the trees. Um, so you see I'm like going down a step each time. Could be something simple like that. You could have some trees going in other directions. Uh, but you need to add something back here. And then finally, the color wash. Okay. Why was it so green? It's nighttime. Nighttime should be blue. I'm only looking at the background color. Don't worry about everything else. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So pretty much inversing. Okay, so I'll just do it my way. So I'm going to get that blue. Actually, that's exactly how it's supposed to look. If it's supposed to be an eerie, Disney green, gooey, specter kind of green monsters, then okay. But this seems like it was a cute gift. I mean, you said it was a gift for your girlfriend. So if, if it's supposed to be some sort of ghoulish Halloween gift... That's fine. But if it's supposed to be a cute nighttime scene, you need to fill these trees up. This trees, a, tree, a naked tree is a trope. It means goosebumps and Halloween. Okay. So you need to fill that tree with some leaves. And then you need to cool down the little dude because there's light behind him. 
And then we need to darken the background even more. Because it is nighttime. But once we do that, do you see how cute and in a silhouette he is? Just a little bit more at the top. Just like that. Maybe the top is actually left alone and only the sides get the silhouette. Yep, that looks right. Okay, so a little bit of color correction, filling in the background, not letting it just sit like that, putting the trees, uh, adding some leaves to the trees, and you should be good. If it's a gift for your friend, and I feel like you're using the, you know, the Applefist guy, um, I feel like you're using his style. He uses a very bloomy style for the background. He almost never has an actual background. Um, things are always like top max saturation. Something a little bit more like, literally, I'm serious. I don't know if you know who Applefist is on DeviantArt, but this is what he does. Okay, it's usually something like that. If it's completely dark, he will <clears throat> darken the whole thing. But raise the saturation on those eyes like you've never seen. Usually something like that. We never have little, little, um, kind of like fingers, sinewy fingers just in the painting. I usually have some kind of, <clears throat> so I'm going to duplicate the layer, some kind of blur. I mean, his art hasn't changed in the years that I've, you know, between I was like 18 and now his art hasn't changed at all. Um, so he's a uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. He kind of does a little thing like that and then uh, keeps the face in detail. Let's so see how cute that is. And then, so now that we have that, we, uh, I just feel like I'm changing your painting entirely, but I just don't feel like you need um, what you were doing before. And I will enlarge the eyes. <laughs> if this is a cute gift for your girlfriend and you're giving her trees, bare trees and ghoulish background. I'm not sure what that says about what you think about gifts and what she's going to read. She's going to be nice. She's going to be like, oh, thanks. This is so good. I love it. Um, but she's going to have a problem with uh, with why you gave her a Halloween scene. Maybe she likes that stuff. I don't know. Okay, and then guess what? Boop, 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 boop. All this goes back out. Alright, so I duplicated the layer, blurred, erased what I wanted, and you can add some more, you can give him a bow tie, I mean, you can do whatever you want at this point, because now you have a really good setup. If you want to, which you can, because at this point we're breaking all rules, you can make like a little floodlight just come in. That's not going to work, like I did with the fox. So I'm just going to choose like a floodlight here, I'm gonna actually make it blue, it's cuter and just make it come in like that. New layer, of course, and just erase away. And then delete at the rest so that it kind of just sits there. All right. You have a little bit of everything kind of going on. You might want to raise his values. Not, not like that. Maybe like, no, this is not going to work. Um, I just, yeah, you need more. I can't, there's only so many tricks. There's only so many sprinkles I can throw on this. Um, the rest pretty much needs to be you actually going in there and painting in some, some real detail on the... Uh, on the feathers because I'm adding all the tricks I know but it's it's not gonna fix everything all right so this seems like you're working from the same kind of attitude as that artist uh, you might want to use some cuter patterns you might want to invent your own patterns but it just seems like it's a scary scene you know um, like the way they design the forest in um, Ichabod Crane's uh, the Headless Horseman uh, short that they did a long time ago, that hand-animated hand one. Uh, and this one kind of feels more like a gift. 
All right. So uh, this one, um, right off the bat, you're going to notice as soon as I do this, everything seems to fall into place. The background color of the sky makes almost zero sense with the painting. But as soon as I do that, I don't even have to do anything else. As soon as I do that, it kind of makes more sense, doesn't it? First of all, I know you want to make the fire feel like it's glowing, but there's some kind of daytime right now allowing us to see this guy. All right, that's number one. Number two, the cloud line is way too detailed for a cloud line. All right, we do get that kind of atmospheric layer, but it's, it's not that... It's not that strong. It's not that sharp. I'm going to just ease up there a little bit. It's starting to look like a TV set. And I'm um, just going to uh, correct this. So it does feel like an overcast day or late afternoon. It feels like there's more clouds up there. So you're, you're getting away with that. Then I'm going to darken and desaturate all this, turn it into some smoke. It's not dark enough for all this smoke to be visible. So I'm going to, all this flame to be visible. So I'm going to darken that, burn on mid-tones, just turn it more into like a blackish flame. Let me just select inverse, select inverse, okay. I'm just darkening things up. And then what I'm going to do after I darken things up, is just put some air. Again, it looks like a TV set. It means that it's got like these perfect, no detail, like a meter's distance for between the parts on the stage for something that's supposed to look like it's hundreds of feet away. <clears throat> so there's that. That object is now in the distance. I am going to brighten higher we go into the sky. I'm going to try to find a decent uh, layer mode for this. Lighten seems okay. So it doesn't lighten everything. This rock is much closer, so I'll let that get a little darker, create some depth. <clears throat> then I need to do a wash. That same wash, that same color I just chose. I'm going to throw it over everything over here. This guy just drowned, okay? And then the water doesn't look like water. It needs to have more of a waterness to them, which means that it's reflecting the daylight colors. It's got shadows on it. Yes, you can cast shadows on water. Um, so I'm just going to throw that everywhere and just erase as I need to. I'm going to zoom out all the way like God mode and then... This is God mode right here. And then um, let the water get darker the closer we get to us. So I've built a border when the, the water needs to start getting darker. And then I'm erasing here, erasing up here, erasing this slight reflection of this. I'm going to zoom back in. So I wouldn't have been able to address that until I zoomed in. Then the slight reflection of the... Uh, so the water is too bright in this case to be reflected on the uh, the fire. Is, is, is the water is too bright to have the water reflected on. Then I'm just going to just clean that up. Remembering that this rock is standing in the way of the light. It's casting shadows. You can cast shadows. Not necessarily a reflection, but it is a cast shadow. And then the sand... Is, is pretty bright, can reflect some of the daylight on it. <clears throat> How in the world do you see with a canvas that small? Well, the way I see it is things are a lot more difficult when you're watching them happen versus being in them. So I imagine that flying a plane looks difficult, but once you learn all your tools and you get in there, it's not as difficult or anywhere near it. Even when you're really good at it, and you did all your homework, it's nowhere near as difficult as you ever imagined it to be. So we like to imagine things more difficult than they really are. So stop being a little shit and go try and zoom out your stuff that far and don't complain because you can work with a canvas that small. It's used for the larger pieces, the larger changes, the, 
stuff that is so big on the canvas it needs zooming out in order to take care of. And I'm just raising the, the, the sand to be a little bit brighter because that was just way too dark. Um, what I can do is go back to the old sand and uh, erase away where the water was just to show how it's wet. I think that's a really cool touch. Just to show that he's been washed up. Even if it is more wet there, sand, even if it's wet, get, looks more wet with a recent, uh, uh, recent uh, wave. And I think I'm going to start crying because I really want some summertime. And then shallow water looks very different. It's more green than uh, non-shallow water. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with the color. And then I'm going to move into the value. Move into the, the grass, I mean, sand color. And then the value change on midtones. All these little changes are adding up. They're all kind of just working together. And we'll look into the before and after now, and you'll see. There's still more. There's so much more atmosphere to consider in this painting. But um, this is a good starting point. I'm going to darken the water here. Because it's not making making much sense um, that the that this is happening. This seems to be your only call to glory, this little ship that you spent hours on, which I understand, but you didn't frame it like it was the most important thing. Um, I'm going to saturate the guy. Give him some more saturation. Um, I'm going to do one more little review <clears throat> with his jacket. It's wet, it's dirty, it shouldn't be that uh, purple when I saturate it. And then I'm going to just do a before and after real quick. Brighten up the background one more time. So I count for all these changes and then darken. If I can get away with it, the boat. With on shadow, so it'll only darken the shadow. And then I'm not sure what kind of combustion went into this boat, but why this smoke is perfectly opaque. Should be a little bit more translucent. Shouldn't look like the clouds. Should be a little bit more wispy. More uh, prone to like wind and should be a little bit more uh, forgiving. Where's my cloud brush? Because <clears throat> I know you're trying to frame the painting, but what's happened is you're you're kind of losing the painting in this boat with this super opaque uh, smoke coming out of it. I just, I'm just following my instincts over here. If it looks right, it looks right. I think this is starting to look right for some smoke. <clears throat> but I'm going to leave that up to you because I don't have time to make this, to make my case with that. It will make it a little bit lighter because it shouldn't be that dark. And um, you might want to show the part of the water where the, the clouds are casting the shadow, but again, I'm going to leave that up to you. And I'm just going to go into the before. Right before I do that, actually, I'm going to just raise the levels up. Okay. After. So more sky, more environment, something explaining why we can see him. If it was nighttime, okay, let's say this was nighttime. If it was nighttime, this would happen. I'm going to desaturate. This is all you had to do. And of course, darken the background. If it was nighttime. And then you can just do whatever you want with the boat. All right? You didn't match your light environments. We would not be able to see all this in the boat. So you kind of, you know, it's easier to do this one than it is to do this one. Um, it's your choice. It's your choice. Dramatic nighttime explosion scene? Probably this one is more likely. 
Uh, but uh, but if someone just found him, uh, or you know, they could have a lamp, then it would explain why we can't see him. But uh, the nighttime one looks be better because we, we I don't have to do more work to, for the boat. Um, I don't have to do anything to the boat because the boat is now the focal point. But in the daytime version, you had this, and then the before before, you had this, which was between the both of them. Okay. Um, for the nighttime version, if you go this route, which I have a feeling you will, um, it uh, it needs to be into the blues, and then the, this needs to be deleted. Oops. Shit. Okay. So you don't have a green background; you have a blue one. Okay, uh, I think that's enough for today. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, uh, so, to recap, there will be a sale for Porsche Studio starting tomorrow at 1 p.m. I am deliberating whether I should just start it tonight at 12 a.m. Um, but um, I've announced it for tomorrow, so we'll see. It'll give me time to make an announcement video for everyone. But if you want to join, hand in your work for critique. Uh, go to isterac.com and click on the Google Plus icon to join. Read the rules, please. Uh, the sale is starting Friday. Uh, please don't forget about that. If you need a copy, I'm not going to have another sale like this for a long time. This is what I said back in October, September time. Um, and I think I had the sale in September, not October. Um, so this is one of your only chances. I do one only when we have a massive overhaul update that spikes the price. Um, Patreon is available for those who are looking for private tutoring alternative and the apprentice tier. Um, so if you want to join me on Patreon, please do. Or as just as a watcher, I have a goal of a thousand patrons. So if you want to just join as a watcher and support the channel, you also have that option. Uh, that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye.